I had the bright idea to try to cut my own hair. Um, I had a few successful attempts. I got a little cocky with that, and uh, this last attempt was unsuccessful. So for now, <laughs> that's the look that we're going with for this video, which by the way is about creating digital art in Photoshop and possibly creating something that could be sold as an NFT. And by the end of the video, we're also gonna briefly kind of go over the steps needed to make your digital art into an NFT. But first, let's make that digital art. All right. So, okay, uh, here we are in Photoshop. This is gonna be exciting because uh, I'm gonna be using some you know, stock elements, uh, which by the way are gonna come from today's sponsor, Yellow Images. And by the way, just a quick little insight on how I get sponsors and do this sort of thing. I try to think of an idea that I genuinely feel inspired to do. And at this point, I have a lot of good working relationships with some of the platforms that I actually use in most of my projects. And when it comes to, you know, photo stuff or creating digital art and map paintings and all this stuff in Photoshop, I go to Yellow Images right away because they have a lot of assets in their creative store or even some 3D models that you can actually spin and integrate and drop it into Photoshop, which honestly is great it's pretty awesome to have these sorts of things and that i would genuinely recommend for you guys to use because it's a huge time saver and you get a lot of good quality assets so that's a little insight on why they're a sponsor and who they are but with that being said they recently launched this like yellow ticket feature which is kind of like a membership that you can pay instead of having to buy every individual asset which uh, for what we're doing today you're going to see how that's actually useful because let's face it if you're buying things individually asset by asset that's going to get expensive all right so you know just for fun at the end i'm also going to sum up the total of how much this digital art would have cost to make by buying every single asset and how much it cost me with just that single membership so can you can you take me seriously like this i can't tell i can't tell if i can take myself seriously at all times but now it's all right so in photoshop the first thing that i'm going to do is drop in some assets that i got from yellow images and in this first stage i'm only focusing on dragging and dropping these assets and just looking for composition symmetry so just duplicating and, and just really roughly mapping it out uh with uh with the elements that I pre-selected and downloaded. And it also helps to kind of have a sort of a general idea of what you're going to be doing. This way, when you're executing, especially with a lot of uh, multiple copies and things like that, it, it gets not so overwhelming and you can uh, basically follow uh, a general game plan. And without getting into the meaning too much, the main thing that I wanted to convey since we're talking about NFT related things and cryptocurrency is this sort of rage against the machine feel and the machine being the enemy or sort of the what has been and the old powers that be and the forces that back them up. So that was kind of the inspiration of what kind of symbol I was trying to emulate. And then from there, it was just about finding the right pieces for it. But mainly what I'm doing here is just duplicating and creating something that can uh, mirror both sides. So once I have one side, I can just group that into a folder, duplicate that. And by moving along and doing so with all these other elements and still kind of keeping you know, the, the main idea of what we're trying to go for in mind, we can very quickly get a canvas that is you know visually pleasing and that has a, a good sense of composition and again that's kind of the only thing that i'm really focused on right now is just these asset placement and then later on we're going to fit them all together we're going to actually create some separation so that it's not just a cluster of duplicates of all this stuff but it actually has a sense and you can also guide the eyes of whoever's watching this image in a way that uh you know tells a story or in a way that has some structure where you're kind of going around and looking at the details or maybe you're looking at the main element uh, first, such as this bust over here, and then kind of 
looking around at the other elements that tell the rest of the story. So that's kind of the idea. And again, I can't stress enough how important it is to just get the idea down. Uh, you know, you can have it in your mind, but once you get into Photoshop, just get it down and try to use as many as the assets as you as you can so that you can have a frame that is pretty much done in terms of assets. And then you can color and tweak everything all in one go instead of having to go back and forth, which can you know cause a lot of confusion. It can make your workspace and your layers a lot you know less easy to handle but then after that all i did was simply just adding some solids or creating an empty layer and just adding some very subtle brush hits of a certain splashes of color and then maybe changing the transfer mode to something like soft light overlay or even screen in some cases and then another way of creating separation is just a levels or simple brightness and contrast adjustments along with the hue and saturation adjustments to change the hue of certain assets and by all clicking these adjustments uh, you know in between the line with the actual layer you can actually have those adjustments only affect the layer below it and this is great for you know going through and for example making these uh airplanes and these drones in the background uh with a hue that's more in the red tone and you know just having minor adjustments of brightness and contrast for example with the guns and each sort of group has its own effects that we can just attach to that specific layer and by moving along in your image, kind of getting a sense of what is in the foreground and what is in the background and sort of creating this dimension, it helps bring this otherwise very cluttery image with a lot of elements and give it some sense, give it some extra bit of uh, dimension and let it feel a little bit more dynamic since it is uh, only just a flat thing that to make matters worse also has very similar colors so separation is going to play a major role in this image another thing that you can do for example with this bust is to uh, create sort of this fake drop shadow by duplicating the element itself and whichever copy is below it just attach uh, a solid color with that alt click technique that we saw before so that the full copy that sits below the asset that we're looking at right now can become fully red or fully you know whatever color you want and then you can scale it and offset it by just a few pixels so that it shows through the top copy and this gives it sort of this nice edge uh, that I, I left as is but of course you can also blur out you can very easily create a realistic looking shadow and tricks like this really helped separate everything out in space and really fighting that flattening feel that this piece could otherwise have. Also, shout out to Yellow Images for like letting me just create whatever I want because it just so happens that the last few times that we've worked together, the imagery has been kind of on the dark side. Um, good intention and hopefully message, I hope, but uh, you know, it is a little bit menacing looking, so. <laughs> but not all of them, thankfully. And if you want to check out those speed arts or those Photoshop videos, I'm going to leave a link in the description with a playlist with all of them. And okay, I think we're at a pretty good point now. Uh, I, I kind of digress when I go into these tunnels of just creating this digital art, you can really get lost into the world that you're creating. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely time consuming, but it's time well spent. If you are curious with the whole NFT thing, uh, I'm not going to give any financial advice big lawyer disclaimer there, but I, I want to just kind of jump on this idea, this trend, and actually kind of see what it's all about. Um, I haven't made any NFTs. I'm thinking of releasing some with this video. So if I did decide to do it, I don't know, maybe there'll be a link in the description, but uh, I think it's a cool thing uh, for digital artists to make money off of their own art because for digital art, a lot of times, if it wasn't for commissioned work and freelance work or working for a company, uh, digital artists didn't really have a way of making money just like a regular painter could with being sold at a gallery or, you know, whatever you do with paintings. You know, art is valuable and uh, it's nice that even digital art is seen at, at the same level and can be used in commerce in this new way. So that's my take on digital NFT, but let's jump in to some of the major platforms and see how you can mint your work and add it to the crypto chain. You essentially need a crypto wallet which can hold your Ethereum or whatever other crypto 
cryptocurrency. And once you have that set up, you just essentially link that to a platform where you can upload, host, buy or sell the NFT itself. And for that, there are many platforms out there with their own uh, basic process. But essentially, once you get to that step and you have your crypto wallet linked, all you have to do is essentially just uploading the image, adding the title and description, just the usual sort of thing. And then once you do that, you might have to pay some fees uh, upfront or later, depending again on what platform you're using. But that is essentially the fees, the gas fees, as they call it, to mint the image and add it to the crypto chain. And once you do that, you essentially can publish your NFT and people can sell it or buy it and then sell it. And there you go. So huge thanks again to Yellow Images uh, just for even you know having such amazing assets that allowed me to build this end result, but also for sponsoring this video, really appreciate their support. And if you are interested in what they have to offer, check out their link in the description and consider looking into their yellow ticket feature because it's brand new. I think it's a great deal. And as you saw by the price comparison, it can save you a lot of money. Also, if you want to throw some love my way and check out my marketplace, you can do so at chriscar.com slash marketplace. Over there, I have digital packs that can enhance your cinematography and VFX, but that one's, you know, there if you want it as well. All right. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr, and I will see you.